Hello and welcome Hi. to the Bitcoin Show, episode one. <laughs> we okay. are, I'm Bruce Wagner. I'm Plato. And I'm Ed. And uh, welcome to the show. We're uh, broadcasting live from New York City and live to tape. So this is our absolute first episode of the Bitcoin Show. And uh, today's episode is brought to you by our sponsors, Carpe VM Video Marketing. Seize your market, say it with video. CarpeVM.com and Mezzi Grill, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. MezziGrill.com, 8th Avenue at 55th Street here in New York City, just a couple blocks south of Columbus Circle. And U.S. Gold Coins, our trusted advisor for excellent investments in rare gold and silver coins. USGoldCoins.com. The real Play Doh with us visiting New York. He's uh, on. Uh, well, tell us about what you're, what you're doing, what you're up to. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, I am on the first ever Bitcoin road trip. My objective is to get across the entire country spending no U.S. dollars at all, only Bitcoins. And I moved out of my house in Hartford this, uh, this past Saturday, so I've been traveling for one week now. And where are you going? <laughs> uh, you can see uh, on this map behind me yeah, that, yeah. yeah, pull it up. Bring it um, I started out in Hartford. I took a quick stop in Boston and went across to Schenectady, New York. And next I'm heading down the coast and across towards Los Angeles. Mm, how long do you think it's going to take you? Well, it's taken me a week to get from Hartford to <laughs> New York City. So uh, more than another week, definitely. Uh, I'm thinking probably a month and a half, two months to get across the country. Right. Cool. And so you're basically depending on... The donations and and do you have some bitcoins that you're starting off with or how are you doing it? Yeah, I started off. Uh, I have uh, basically my life savings, which is uh, not it's it's fairly modest, uh, a few hundred bitcoins, which will get me a good portion of the way. And I'm I've already received several donations from community members, so I uh, I'd like to uh, thank everybody who's donated, including Bruce and Ed. Yes, no problem. As well as everybody who's put me up for a night and given me any other kind of support because uh, I can't do it without you guys. So, awesome. But the main idea is that you're traveling across, you're the first human who's traveled across the United States spending no dollars, only Bitcoin. That's correct. So uh, how did you line up, uh, I mean, how are you going to line up uh, what you need, like in the way of food and gas and uh, lodging, only using Bitcoin? Well, there's the rub, right? Uh, so far, I've, I've uh, found people who are willing to trade me gasoline and food for Bitcoins. And I'm, I'm going to have to do that the entire way. Um, when I was in Boston, I stopped at MIT, and I met community member Lama. So Lama sold me a tank of gas. I paid him <laughs> some Bitcoins. Uh, transaction cleared. I went on my way. And mm -hmm. was this at a gas station, or they had jugs of gas or something? No, no. We went to a gas station. He used his credit card and <laughs> filled me up. Okay, okay. I... I, I just figured along the way people would have like big containers of gas or something. Mastercard and Visa is always in the loop somehow. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. It's, until until we can manage to get uh, a yeah. you know shell gas to take bitcoins. And then we're working on that. Working on that. It's going to happen much faster than people think. I think it's going to. Oh, take I certainly hope so. Yeah. So so the right. idea is that we we want to promote. Uh, people using bitcoins and make people aware that they're out there and that you can actually live your life right you can use them for stuff that's right. i mean that's that's the key i tell people about bitcoins and their first question is well what's why are they why are they good what's important what can i do with them and i mean that's the important question once you can do everything with them there's you know no really good reason to use anything else right but right. at the moment it's 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 tricky i'm i'm expecting i'll have uh more than a couple adventures on my travels yeah i bet and, I, I see over here this, there's a big gap in here in the West Coast that there's no one. Uh... Yep, after uh, after Mississippi or so, I have, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, about five or six pins. And uh, that's that's mm, more than a thousand miles. In between. So, 
it, it may get tricky by then. Yeah. But uh, I'm hoping that uh, people will start following my adventures. So as I as I travel, I'm I'm writing down my stories. I'm taking some videos. Uh, I'd like to make some podcasts, uh, and I'm I'm certainly hoping to put some more content on the Bitcoin show. Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, let me ask you about how did you select this route that we're we're looking at? Um, is was there some strategy involved in in determining your route? It's not the most direct route, is it? That's true. It's certainly <laughs> not the most direct route. Uh, I had a, I had a couple couple things that made me choose this. First of all, uh, I've lived in the Northeast for most of my life, and it's always been cold. And I, I, I really would like to see some warm states. So I wanted to pursue a southerly route and uh, try and get across. And I'd like, to, I'd like to see a lot of the U.S. as well. Mm-hmm. My, my primary motivation here is really I, I want a good adventure. I want a good story. Mm-hmm. And these, um, yeah, I was going to ask you the colors, like the green or what? So the it looks like the red are people who have offered um, gasoline, gasoline or lodging or something like that. And the what are the blue ones? The blue pins are people who have offered me lodging, and oh. usually you get usually gas as well. Oh, I see. Red is gas, and right. then blue red is, is gas, blue lodging, is lodging. And food, and other things. And, and then what? Green, green is sites that you wanted to see. Yeah, green is interesting things interesting along the way. Things along the way, I so, got you. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's this the map, color coding. This map is actually publicly viewable and publicly editable. Editable. Right. So if any if any of our viewers uh, are are interested in helping me out on this trip, uh, you can you can go to therealplato.com and I have uh, well a I have my stories, I also have a link to this map. You can open it up in Google and just drop a pin on it, and that that could be your house if you're willing to let me sleep for a night, or maybe a gas station nearby if you're willing to buy me some gas in exchange for bitcoins, or if you just know of something cool in your state, I'd certainly be glad to have that pin on the map. So I have a possible destination. Mm-hmm. And uh, what do you perceive to be your biggest challenge throughout throughout all this? My biggest challenge is uh, almost definitely going to be gasoline. Uh, mm-hmm. So far, it hasn't been too too problematic. I've I've met up with a number of people who I've already met, who I've known personally, and it's it's easy to convince them to, to sell <laughs> me gas for bitcoins. Right. It, it, it's going to be a little bit trickier once I'm in the middle of Kansas and I have to convince people that you know, this Bitcoin has value, and you should sell me gasoline for it. Mm-hmm. Well, hopefully there are, we have viewers that are going to see this, and if you find yourself, well, if you go to therealplato.com that's or great. Twitter, uh, at therealplato, right? Um, they, yep, that's then, great. Then they can... The screen. Uh, yeah, let's see. So, uh, one of these, yeah, there we are. So, twitter.com slash therealplato, or, uh, you know, as you know, on Bitcoin, I mean, on uh, Twitter, it's at the real Plato uh, or the real Plato dot com. That you, there's uh, your blog, and at the bottom, there's an item where you can click on the map, and you can actually see the live interactive map. So if they find themselves that that they live somewhere on this route, they can contact you just by emailing you or Twitter, right? Sure. And and also, you said you're going to have a laptop um, on the uh, in the actual car on the road, right? Of course, yeah. So you'll have I, a, I have my internet. laptop with me, and I have my. Uh, T-Mobile G1. That's actually the very first Android phone, and it's been rock solid and reliable. I, I tried to play Angry Birds on it today, and it was maybe two frames per second, so it, it's not really suitable for that. But I can certainly plug it into my laptop and use it as a tethered wireless connection, so I will have internet access along the way. I will be continuing to write and post videos and stories for this entire route. Unless I hit sell dead spots, then I might have a couple days <laughs> yeah. of, of trouble. Right. Hopefully not a couple days. If you're taking yeah. most of the interstates... And the uh, I recognized uh, some people like uh, Eric. See Eric in Denver. He's already on your map. Some some people we know. So from the Bitcoin forum, there's a community obviously of people. But uh, and you know it, you don't have to explain Bitcoin to them. In fact, like they're actually it would be the equivalent of them buying Bitcoin for dollars because if, if they're going to put you know whatever fifty dollars worth of gas in your car for. 50 Bitcoin, then it's it's sort of like them buying Bitcoin from you along the way, in effect. Sure, yeah. So, uh, which is cool. That's all good. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> and now Bitcoin is a, oh, like a, about a dollar now. It mm-hmm. went back up to a dollar. So I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping it stays there. Yeah. <laughs> it just makes the ones I have more valuable. Yeah, right. that's what we were saying, that if you, if you, you know, what would be really fascinating is if you get some donations along the way, and if the value of Bitcoin was to keep on going up to $1.50 or $2 during your trip, 
uh, and then the trip actually ended up costing nothing. That would be so cool. That would, <laughs> that would, be, so that would cool. be pretty impressive. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going to bank on it, but I can certainly hope. Mm-hmm. Right. I actually, uh, let me go back for one minute, and let me, uh, Bruce mentioned mm-hmm. that if you, if, if you do live along this route, by all means, uh, drop some pins on there and help me out. However, even if you don't, uh, please still consider putting a pin on the map or two, because this, this route is tentative. If it turns out that maybe uh, Spencer in Fayetteville, Arkansas, has uh, some engagement or some reason why I can't stop by, I might, I might instead go through Texas or Oklahoma. So the more options I have, the better I can plan, and the more likely it'll be that I can succeed. Right. So any help is appreciated. Yeah, well, we're on board with you. <clears throat> is there... Sure. Is there any chance that your route might change uh, along the way? Yeah, that's might... what he just said. Oh, it might. Yeah, I'm. I'm okay. considering going uh, through Texas, New Mexico, New Mexico, and Arizona because uh, I could probably shave off uh, six, seven hundred miles if I don't go up through mm-hmm. Denver and down through Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. The other problem with going through Las Vegas is that uh, my self-imposed rule on this trip is I'm not allowed to spend any dollars. And I've never been to Las Vegas, and I, I kind of don't want to waste my first trip to Las Vegas without being able to spend a few dollars there. You're going to need to find a slot machine that takes Bitcoin. That would be ideal. That would be ideal. That would be, oh my gosh. So this is, uh, this is really revolutionary. I mean, th- this, obviously this is, the, our, this is Only One TV's first uh, episode of our first show, so this is a real first for us. And obviously, it's a first for the whole world. Bitcoin itself. I always tell my friends that you know we're not in the ground floor of something big here. We're in the basement, just like one or two steps up. This is really, really big, and we're it, before the very beginning of it. It's oh, just so so new. I completely agree. Yeah, it's just so exciting, isn't it, to be like a, a pioneer in something that's just you just know. The more you know about it, the more you realize that this is going to change the whole world, like mm-hmm. the internet did. You know, I think there's an Oregon Trail joke here somewhere. <laughs> what is that? Uh, I'm not sure. That's uh, I was trying to think of it and I failed. But, you know, yeah. crossing the country on Bitcoins, right, pioneering right. adventure, it's, it's somewhere. Yeah, exactly. It's like the Wild West. <laughs> totally, totally. And so what is, I mean, besides the altruism of it, um, like what is motivating you to do this? Uh, well, I want to venture and... The only other real component is the altruism. I want to help Bitcoin. I I think Bitcoin is a really impressive system, and I think it has potential to make some incredible changes. Mm -hmm. But in order for that to happen, it's going to have to hit some critical mass and become much more widely adopted. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be that hard to do. It's it's obviously, well, a pretty impressive currency already. And like you said, Mm -hmm. we're not even at the beginning yet. So I'm, yeah. I'm just hoping to accelerate the process a little bit. Good. So let me let me ask you this: When I mean, <clears throat> we've kind of been uh, talking, assuming that we're uh, talking to a Bitcoin community audience. But let's say someone's tuning into this first time and they're like, "What the heck is a Bitcoin?" When somebody asks you, has no idea what you're talking about. Um, first of all, what is a Bitcoin? Where can I get it? What can I do with it? Why would I use it? What, you, what are your answers to those basic questions? All right. So if, if somebody has never heard of this, my, my elevator pitch would be the following. So let's say you want to transact some business with someone in another country, and you're probably going to send dollars to them. You're probably going to use the Internet. Maybe you'll use Visa. Maybe you will use PayPal. Maybe a bank transfer. All these are intermediaries, and mm-hmm. some of them are better than others, but they all have their own fees. They all have their own restrictions, and none of them are really perfect. Bitcoin is a way to remove these intermediaries, so I can directly send money to you. It's it's the people's currency, mm-hmm. and I think I think that in itself is really one of the most important things that you can grasp about Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Well, people have the question: so, but who controls Bitcoin? Who issues it? All that. Sure. What do you uh, say? <laughs> so there isn't any central entity. There's no bank or company or government in the middle of the spider web. It's a network of people, and they all agree on a set of rules. Right. And those rules govern things like how do we make new coins? How do I get coins from Alice to Bob? Uh, how do we prevent people from cheating? Mm-hmm. And these rules were designed carefully enough that they, so far, appear to work perfectly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, the analogy I use sometimes is that it's like uh, it's more like email that you can't stop it. You can, I mean, you can control and regulate your little uh, your little fiefdom of you know your corporation or your city or your country or whatever, but you can't stop email it's, it's, and the, or the internet itself. The internet itself. You can censor the internet in your country or your company or whatever, but you can't really censor the entire internet because it is just a web 
So um, I heard a quote recently, what was about, actually it was about internet censorship, that the internet views censorship as, um, as a malfunction and it routes around it. And I love that idea because it's true. When you're, you know, any, anybody who tries to censor anything on the internet, it just doesn't matter. It's detected and it just, all the information goes around it. <laughs> Not only that. You can't stop it. But you end up making a Streisand effect where yeah. attempting to restrict that information points you out you get called out exactly. like you are the censoring entity and more people start hearing about it and it backfires mm -hmm. on yeah you. Mm -hmm. bad pr <laughs> to say the least yeah so so bitcoin is decentralized there's no central issuing authority um it's absolutely like peer-to-peer -peer technology it can't be shut down by anybody without literally without shutting down the internet sure. it can't be hacked because it's the state of the art in um in in cryptography, uh, cryptography. and cryptography cryptographic technology as it is today until we reach quantum computing or something in the future but you know that that's going to be like a, a never escalating thing technology of course but uh basically it's it's at least as secure as all the world's banking oh, if definitely. not more mm -hmm. so um it's really really exciting and that people are actually <coughs> buying and selling products and services as well as currency dollars mm -hmm. euros yen ruples all over the world that's true. Uh, you, you shouldn't forget, though, that uh, it's still fledgling, and it's still small enough that, you know, there are potential vulnerabilities. If you, if you spend, you know, several hundred million dollars to buy uh, GPUs or, or hashing power, it, it's conceivable that you could attack the network in some fashion. Mm -hmm. it's, it's fairly robust, and you couldn't, like, steal people's Bitcoins. Right. But you, you might be able to at least cause some mischief. So <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm hoping that I can get that possibility out of the way by <laughs> right. making it more popular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the more popular the, it becomes, the more computers are on this big web of a network and the, and the more power, the more um, robust and secure it will be, mm -hmm. right? Right. The more people use it, the stronger it gets. Right. Mm -hmm. And Can, uh, Do you want to tell, tell us some of the ways that you've bought Bitcoin or you traded them or sold them? Or, or, uh, I sure. I actually uh, sold some silver quarters to Ed for some Bitcoins today. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Who's Ed? Oh yeah, <laughs> and uh, yeah, yeah, pull it up. I, uh, I I actually sold my television for bitcoins uh, for 150 bitcoins. I, I posted on Bitcoin forums and on uh, the Bitcoin OTC channel saying I'd like to sell my television for 150 bitcoins. Mm -hmm. I was contacted by an interested party. We set up a clear coin transaction. So thank you, Gavin, and we uh, ended up successfully completing it. So cool. he got that's the TV, great. I got the bitcoins, and that's good for what three tanks of gas. That's right, and, and that's, that's what so you're cool. using as part of your initial yes, it stockpile. Is. Yeah, cool. And just for the audience who doesn't maybe didn't didn't catch all that, the uh, the reference to Clearcoin is Clearcoin dot com is a new um, venture that uh, Gavin Andresen is that how you say his yeah. name? Yeah, uh, Google. I think it's Clearcoin dot dot com. But if you Google oh. if you Google, Google the word Clearcoin, Clearcoin, you'll you'll definitely find it. Okay, so it's this new project that is basically. Uh, it's an escrow service for Bitcoin because Bitcoin acts like cash. It's an irreversible transaction. When you send Bitcoin, it's just like handing some a stranger or whoever cash. And so, therefore, if you're buying and selling a merchandise uh, with some an unknown person like eBay, somebody you don't know, um, you can actually request or they can request that the money be sent to this third party escrow and then when the goods are received in good condition they can click a button and release the mon money and in fact they he even has a way that if you don't trust that the person's going to play right and actually release it you you can ask them to set up like if you really don't trust them you can ask them to set up a charity escrow where i read this on his site that that they put the money into this escrow and if and if they don't release it to you then the money will go to charity and not be refer refunded to them right. so there's different options. The benefit of that is so that they really don't have any, uh, they don't gain anything if they rip you off. Because right. they can't get their coins back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's a pretty cool, I think it's a needed thing. It's kind of like what eBay advertises to be, but really isn't always. You know, the idea that you can really safely transact business with strangers because of their reputation. And, all that. and if you don't get what you're, what you're supposed to get, then you, you'll get your money back. And in this way, it's, 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 it's better because it's cash and when you receive your goods and you know they're in good condition you can click a button and release the money after that you can't get it back though 
you know, with PayPal and even MasterCard Visa, they've been known to reverse transactions, you know, even six months after the fact, which mm -hmm. is just wrong. It's wrong. Not to mention all the exorbitant fees and so forth. So. Well, it's attractive to some people. It's attractive to, uh, you know, the, the shareholders of, of, of eBay, I guess, and PayPal. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But uh, I, I think, yeah, this Bitcoin definitely is, is the, the, like you said, it's the people's money. Mm -hmm. And it also works for, you know, not only like massive quantities, millions of dollars it could work for. It could also work for um, micropayments. Like micro yeah, yeah, totally. So I always think of this, that, that this could be the thing that really works finally to monetize the web. Because right now people have uh, a YouTube video that gets 80 million views or something. And, and the joke is what they're going to get paid in, bit, in um, YouTube dollars or something. And, you know, it's like they're... YouTube stars, you know, but they don't have anything to show for it. But they can now put a Bitcoin address on their YouTube channel and say, if you like the video, send me a nickel, you know, send me a, you know, half a Bitcoin or whatever. And, and, you know, people have said, you know, if like this one uh, acquaintance of mine who created a, a film on YouTube called uh, Money as Debt, he said, if I had a nickel for every person who's seen my videos, I'd be a multimillionaire. Yeah, he's got millions now, of yeah. viewers. And I said, now you actually can. So this could be a way to monetize web content, whether you're a, a musician or an artist, a, a filmmaker or a blogger or whatever, you're a software developer, whatever. You ask for donations, and people, I think, are happier to tip in the tip jar on their way out rather than hitting a paywall and say, you can't read that article until you better you know enter your credit card and pay up front sure right so um, that's another inherent advantage I, I agree with you that bitcoins are a great way for micro microtransactions and micro payments mm -hmm. because one of the biggest things is that you don't need an account you just need mm -hmm. to have some bitcoins and mm -hmm. then you can send some bitcoins mm -hmm. like very very easily once you have the system set up like an email address even you know if you think about it really it's true even homeless people have email addresses. I mean, they don't have a cell phone or they anything could, else. Theoretically. No, they could, I mean, <laughs> yes. I mean, not that they all do, but they they do. A lot of them do. And it's not. It's just so easy because you can go to the public library, you can get on the internet, and you can create an email address, and you can create a Bitcoin account just as easily. So literally, you you know, a homeless person, and none of that, but a, a child who's too young to open a bank account, you know, you could be sure. 13 from your paper route and have Bitcoins. I mean, it's... And it's just freedom and micro amounts. So you can, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in Nigeria or, you know, wherever you are, um, you can send, if you want to donate a nickel to a charity, to an orphanage in Tanzania. Or to you, my Bitcoin road trip. Or to, or to your Bitcoin road trip or anything you want to donate to, you can send a nickel and it costs exactly a nickel. Right. Right. It's just as easy as sending 200,000 Bitcoins. Right. Exactly. Yeah, so. Which is really revolutionary. Yeah. You can't do that through Visa and PayPal because the fees will eat you up. Exactly, you know? exactly. They yeah, always want a piece of the pie. Yep. So what do your piece. what do your people in your stratosphere think about you doing this? Do they even understand, or do you have to do a lot of explanation? I've had to do a good amount of explanation in the past <laughs> couple of weeks, so I'm <laughs> I'd like to think I'm getting uh, fairly good at it. Uh, in general, they think it's a really cool idea, and Many are skeptical that it'll work. I'm I'm skeptical mm -hmm. myself. It's, uh, it's it's fairly ambitious, but I'm I'm fairly confident it'll work. I I have some reservations, but uh, how do you define work? Work, work <laughs> will <You'll> be, survive. <laughs> I define work as if I can end up in Los Angeles without spending any dollars. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Did you have to out. make it back though? No. <laughs> oh, it's a one-way trip. So far, it's uh, a one-way trip. I'm, oh, uh, okay, got it. Yeah, I, I I'm intending on keeping an eye on Craigslist postings, uh, career builder postings, and looking for a job along the way. Mm. By trade, I'm electrical. I'm an electrical engineer. Mm. I I lost my job in January, unfortunately, and I figure now that I have nothing to lose. Why not? Mm -hmm. Why not travel across the country on right. bitcoins? Perfect timing. Are you willing to work for dollars instead of uh, bitcoin, or will you only work for employers that will pay you in bitcoin? No, that'll that'll, <laughs> that'll make it a, a lot easier. So I'm I'm willing, really narrow it down if you only <laughs> right, answer. right, right. I'm willing I'm willing to uh, exchange whatever services I have along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, maybe yeah. help you set up bitcoin on your computer and take a couple of bucks. Yeah, you along yeah. the road trip. Right. You're very technical. So you should 
should get some so business people, that way for uh, sure. You mean people that are along the route of your road trip that need uh, some, you know, what their computer scan for viruses or Bitcoin setup yeah, or sure. any any kind of computer work or sure. technical work? You're willing to do those services. So I'm willing to accept dollars, but I'm not willing to spend the dollars on anything mm-hmm. except bitcoins. Right. I'm, I'm making the exception for bitcoins and. Uh, okay. Actually, uh, tolls are kind of an exception as well. I have an, I have an Easy Pass, and uh, I'm I'm uh, my, my parents tolls. are actually covering the Easy Pass costs. I'm paying them with bitcoins to, <laughs> okay, as, as a there reimbursement. You go. There you go. Oh, so nice. I'm I'm attempting to not cheat. And, <laughs> right. like, and if you want, you can uh, send any cash that comes your way, and we'll. Replace them with bitcoins for you. Kind of the same idea, I guess. So that, your coins, yeah. yeah, that's that's true. There's uh, there's several entities throughout the country who are willing to take cash in exchange for bitcoins. Right. One right. one of which is you guys. Right. Yeah. Perfect. And Perfect. Uh, you can also use Google Maps to wrap to, to, to. There's a setting to avoid toll roads. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. I don't know if that's 100 uh, percent gonna work because you know you might you might find that's the really the only way you want to go. On your route, right. but and you were, um, are you thinking about going down Florida, down to the, all the way down to Miami and? I've been considering. Back? I've been considering going all the way down to the end of Florida and back up because I have a couple of people who have committed to uh, selling me some gas along the way, maybe a, uh, maybe a bed, but Florida's mm. pretty big, yeah. and my my car is 139,000 miles on it now, and. I'm a little skeptical as if if it'll manage to get across the country. <laughs> wow. So if if it ends up breaking down somehow, that'll that'll certainly be one one mm-hmm. one for the blog. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. So you're gonna you're gonna blog about it on your blog. You're also you're gonna have your laptop. You'll be online pretty much the whole way. Sure. And you're gonna also I heard you got um, a flip camera, so you're gonna do video updates for us, and you're gonna send them to us so we can in our weekly show we'll be able to do a little segment. Uh, of, of your status updates along the way each week. Of That's the right. Uh, right. Community member J Crow, he uh, he was kind enough to lend me a flip camcorder, mm-hmm. and nice. I've yeah. I've been testing it out. It works perfectly. So thank you, J Crow. Awesome. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I will great. certainly be using that extensively along the way and documenting the entire trip. So mm-hmm. don't don't flip phone I and mean, flip camera and tweet and try and drive all at the same time. Make oh sure no, I won't. I pull promise. over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pull over. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, you gotta stay legal, or else you're not gonna be able to pay your tickets. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That's true. I, mean, I don't know if there's any cities that accept Bitcoin for tickets. Yeah. Yet. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Well, let's. This is a good time. I wanna. I wanna take just a quick moment and uh, thank our sponsors. Carpe VM Video Marketing. Seize your market. Say it with video. No matter whether you have a product or service or your own talent or skill that you're selling or marketing or promoting online. Carpe VM will help you create the perfect video for your website to market whatever it is you're promoting. They are professional, skilled, talented. That's all they do. Carpe VM will create a marketing video, kind of like a little infomercial, in a video format for your website or anywhere online. And it's brilliant. Yeah, they have a hands on approach. They're so professional. And they really care about people in general, and it's just their, their personality is just like that. So. And they know what they're doing. They can make it. They'll make sure to work with you from the beginning to end to make sure you come out with a video that impacts your audience and gets the message across, sells your product or service, and um, it's just absolutely brilliant. We love them. And Mezzi Grill, where authentic Mediterranean food meets modern flavor. Mezzi Grill is one of our favorite places. We go there about once a week. Yeah, it makes me hungry just talking about them because I love them so much. They're hummus. They make homemade hummus. It's really, really good. And I love the chicken, lamb. They have everything. Yeah. The, the most, the freshest ingredients. They uh, Marwan over there does his best to get uh, as as much organic and and locally grown, you know, food and products and ingredients as he can. It's super, super healthy, delicious. And affordable. It's like um, fast food prices, but for really good, healthy, high quality food. And it's right, it's just uh, a few blocks south of Columbus Circle, right here at uh, 8th Avenue and 55th Street in New York City. If you're in New York, check it out. Or even if you're passing through, whatever, it's fantastic. It's kind of like um, a uh, sort of like a Chipotle, but a more upscale, um, not fine dining, but casual dining. So it's a really fun, casual place to go and grab something quick and affordable to eat that's delicious and healthy. And usgoldcoins.com, 
our trusted advisor for excellent investments in rare gold and silver coins. Yeah, they're great. Um, they really take the mystery. If you don't know anything about buying silver or gold coins, they just take the mystery right out of it. They sell you graded coins, so you don't really need to wonder if you're getting uh, you know, an authentic piece or not because it's all graded. They also have other types of coins, but um, they primarily uh, sell graded coins and from a trusted source because there again, you're dealing with um, uh, the owners and... So Andy Gauss over there who owns U.S. Gold Coins is a phenomenal partner of ours. He's, uh, he's an expert. We've had him over to our place for dinner. He's awesome. Very, very trusted source too. He's going to tell, tell it like it is. He'll sell you the gold and silver coins that you want to buy as an investment and he'll buy them back whenever you, you need to sell them. So usgoldcoins.com. That's also one 800 Four six eight two six four six or one eight hundred hot coin. Check them out and thanks so much. Be sure when you contact our sponsors, be sure and thank them for sponsoring this program on OnlyOneTV.com. Thanks yes, so much. Thank you. Up, uh, we want to we want to bring up we another have a, guest. Some guest that is uh, something that's happening right here in New York. Uh, it's kind of evolved from a meetup. We call, we started a meetup.com group for Bitcoin, the first one ever, I, to my knowledge. But it's uh, meetup.com slash Bitcoin, which is the New York City Bitcoin users meetup, right? So as a result of that, we actually uh, discovered a, a whole bunch of amazing developers who actually met through this meetup, and it, which is happening every month. So we keep meeting more people and more developers. Well, the developers have kind of spawned their own little group off from from the meetup, um, and they're calling themselves Bitcoin Labs, and they're they're just doing some amazing work. They've been having um, a weekly hackathon, which is basically a let's get together and program, sit down and program, you know, make make good uh, software together every Saturday for weeks now. So uh, we want to check in with them. They're right here in, in New York, but we, we've got them uh, remote here on Skype. And they're so, doing a hackathon at this moment. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're actually and doing... they actually got a few things to share with us today. It's yeah. exciting. So, so we've got a hackathon in progress. And uh, so let's bring them up and uh, on the screen here. And they have a new website called BitcoinLabs.com if you want to check it out. And their <coughs> Twitter handle is on, on the screen now, so... Yeah, so uh, for those of you listening to audio, on Twitter, they're twitter.com Bitcoin Labs. And uh, their website where you can check out for more information is bitcoinlabs.com. And their email, you can also reach them by email, contact at bitcoinlabs.com. So we've got Andrew, Mark, Gabriel, and Sheldon over there. Let me um, switch. Say hi, screen. guys. Hey. Can you hear us? Hello. <laughs> Let me turn up the audio so we can hear you a little bit better. So, hey guys, <laughs> oh my god, there it is, it's, whoa, there, oh, <laughs> the screensaver kicked in, okay, cool, 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 so, so, um, we got on the, we've got Andrew on the left, and who's that behind you, is that Gabriel? Yeah, that's Gabriel, hey Gabe, and, and who have we got over on the right, uh, Sheldon and Mark, Mark's on the right, Sheldon's on the left, right? Cool, so you're hacking Hi, it out at, um, Mark's, is that, is that Mark's lab, right? Yes, it's my laboratory. You're taking a picture of us while we're watching you. Cool, cool. <laughs> oh, technology. What kind of? What? Where are you guys at? Like, where are you at? So this is this is Prometheus Fusion Labs, and this is a nuclear fusion research laboratory. We're doing open source nuclear fusion here. Um, wow. And uh, wow. that's a whole other story. But I'm also into Bitcoin, and uh, one of the projects that we're doing here recently is a Bitcoin ATM machine. Sure. That's just right. We'll show you that now. Cool. Oh. This is the ATM machine. I think Bruce has got a picture on the. He's gonna get a picture on the screen too. So wow. This is an old ATM machine that we bought on eBay. Okay. And uh, we're in the process of hacking this into a uh, Bitcoin ATM machine. I think the world's first. Awesome. So you bought this. Uh, you you found an ATM on eBay. Let me get this straight. Yeah. You found an ATM on eBay because, like, of course, where else would you buy an ATM? And, uh, <laughs> by the way, were there a lot of ATMs for sale on eBay? Oh, uh, yeah. So you picked the yeah. best one. All right, cool. Yeah, like, 200 bucks. And did you already wow. know how to, how to program for an ATM, or did you have to learn? 
Well, we haven't really done it yet. I've no, I mean, I'm taking it apart now, and I'm kind of learning as I go. Mm -hmm. But no, I have no experience. No experience. Okay. <laughs> do you know what? Do you, you know what operating, do you know what operating system it runs? I, I think we're, it's going to run Linux. We're going to basically take all the electronics out of it and oh. interface directly with the motors that spit the cash out in the oh, screen. Oh, okay. Over here we've got the. Uh, this is the cash dispenser itself. Oh my So this God. is the dispenser uh, mechanism, and this is the cash box here. So this cash wow. box can hold fifty thousand dollars U.S. I was right. I yes, won the prize. Yes, they, he was making us guess earlier how much an ATM holds, and I said mm -hmm. fifty. You know, I didn't want to guess too high because I know they run out over the weekends. They used to run out a lot uh, over the weekends. It'd say out of cash at a holiday or something. Mm -hmm. So fifty thousand. That's about right. So so you're not worried about what operating system they run or anything. You're just gutting it, taking the components, and you're going to write your own code. You're going to run it on a little uh, like a little Acer netbook or something, right? Yeah, or, you know, a, <laughs> or a little plug computer or something A like plug that. computer, of course. Oh, my gosh. So you could actually make this ATM like the size of an air freshener if it wasn't for the cash dispensing part of it. Right. <laughs> but the reason that the ATMs are big and heavy is so that people don't walk off with them. You, uh, can't, just, you can't just put your arms around it and take it. That's a lot true. Of money. Otherwise, it could be the size of a cell phone. Wow. So, all right. And then, uh, where where are we going to position this? We're going to find a uh, a sponsoring merchant in Times Square, like TGI Friday or something, and put it in the lobby of the Times Square restaurant, so people can go in and and uh, use it. I was thinking the first place you would put it is hacker conferences. Oh yeah. Well yeah. There you go. Wherever the Bitcoin is. <laughs> as long as it's not too heavy, if you're going to carry that thing to, from conference to conference, but <laughs> yeah, that's uh, what freight is for. Can you make two? <laughs> what, what, are they, are you have any back orders? <laughs> well, first of all, wait a minute. I want to ask you this for the audience because um, what is this ATM going to do? It, what, what, what is different about this ATM than any other ATM? Well, this ATM, what you'll do is you'll send it Bitcoin, and when it gets it, it'll dispense the equivalent amount of cash. Mm -hmm. I'll send it Bitcoin? How, how would I send it Bitcoin? Well, <laughs> we're still kind of figuring that out, but the way it looks now is that the screen will display a QR code. And from your mobile phone, you will use that. You'll send uh, Bitcoin to the address on the screen. And then it'll get it. And then it'll be like, great, got your Bitcoin, and here's the cash. So with my smartphone app, I just uh, scan the, the QR code from the front of the ATM, and I hit right. send $100 of bit worth of Bitcoin or 100 Bitcoin. And then the, right. the U.S. dollar currency or whatever, assuming it's U.S. dollars, is just going to pop right out of it. Basically, if we can make it work. We and I don't have to, yet. I won't have to press any buttons or any enter any PIN code or have any card or anything. No. Wow. That's and amazing. then what it'll do is whatever it can't dispense in U.S. dollars, the change, it'll just send back to the uh, address that it got it from. But it can't. So oh, the change. Or, oh. If you sent much or, you know, when it goes to their nearest $20 bill, there's going to be some change left. Right. And okay. it's going to be obviously based on that moment's exchange rate, Right. Right. Have you figured out how you're going to determine that? I'm guessing, right? Make a little, you know, profit for your. Oh company. yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's the American way. It's the <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Just uh, remember that services like my Bitcoin, uh, if you send the change back to the address it came from, that's not necessarily going to go back to the person who used. That's my true. Bitcoin. That's something I've become aware of in the last week or so. I haven't really mm. thought about that yet, but yeah, future, future work, work. future work. That's excellent work you're doing there. What else are you guys doing? Yeah, so give us an update also on the uh, the uh, app development that you guys are working on there. <laughs> We're flying all over the place. Yeah. There you are. Uh, hey, Andrew. So, hey. <laughs> uh, so we're working on getting a uh, really basic Android app up, and then we're going to make it increasingly awesome over time. Uh, mm -hmm. So all sorts of paranoia features like uh, Tor by default. Um, cool. Wow. Tour by default and completely offline use. For example, um, uh, you would show the ATM a QR code uh, with your private key, mm -hmm. and uh, it would the ATM would take it from there. Uh, so you don't have to use network access at all from your device. Uh, so, yeah, fun paranoid features coming later. Um, nice integration with uh, cash registers. Uh, I mean, point of sale uh, machines mm -hmm. for, for uh, pizza and coffee. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. But, yeah, at first, just incredibly basic. Um, hold some cash on the phone and uh, mm -hmm. send and receive. Okay, yeah. so this app is going to actually be a, a real uh, Bitcoin client that will have its own wallet in the phone. Yeah. 
The okay. keys are stored only on the phone. Okay. Um, probably not a good idea to store hundreds of thousands of dollars there, <laughs> uh, but for a couple hundred or mm -hmm. uh, a few twenties, yeah, absolutely. Unless you're Bill Gates and that's pocket change. But okay, so and you can send. Will will it be able to? Will I be able to put in like twenty five dollars in U S dollars and it'll automatically do? Oh, there it is. Look at that. Wow. <laughs> send receive. That's, oh my gosh. Send receive. That's uh. That looks too complicated for me. I'm not sure if I can figure it out. But <laughs> for so, you, radio listeners, so you hit uh, receive, and then it's going to display the QR code, and the other one hit send, and it scans the QR code. Wow! Look just, at that. Can you see, I don't know if I can see Put that, that back. The QR code. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So here's the. This is yeah. the phone that's going to receive. It's receive. put its address on the phone. Right. In a QR code format, and then this phone is going to re re scan it's just it. It's a camera. Right. Right. So I, it's scan. the scan button right here. Mm -hmm. Scan. Right. And I, I just put it over like this. And go beep. There. You got it. There right. you got it. Perfect. And it says all the. It says the address and then wow. the. Wow. Um, then I hit confirm. <laughs> we'll say no. it. Oh, still, works. still in the works. Still in the works. Now that's awesome. What if I'm not? What if we're not in in physical proximity? Can we do this like over uh you know over the phone? <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like if you're in LA and I'm in New York, can I still send you bitcoins through my app and your app without a QR code? That's a very interesting idea. We might be able to um, work something out with that way. Sure. Yeah, there's lots of ways you could transmit that invoice from one person to the other. Uh, the address they want to be paid at. You can just um, email me your Bitcoin address, and I can copy and yeah. paste it, right? Yeah, or, or you just click that link, and uh, it'll open up. Yeah, mm -hmm. anywhere on the Android system. If you have a, a, a link that's a Bitcoin invoice, mm -hmm. like Bitcoin colon uh, Bitcoin address, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you click that, it'll open up this app. Okay. So, yeah, just other channels like email. Um, yeah, lots of ways you can transmit that address. Okay, that's so sweet. So the I I know we've talked before about so many features. I mean, it's just like unlimited the possibilities. In the initial version that we're, you're, you're going to have uh, available to beta test once it's ready, what what do you what will the most basic features that it will include be? The, yeah, it'll store money. It'll store keys on the phone, uh -huh. um, and you can send, and you can receive. Okay. That's it. That's it. Uh, okay. we, should have, we should have that working within a week, uh, oh, and wow. then we will make it increasingly awesome in okay. a lot of ways. Cool, cool. I'm really glad to hear that. People have been clamoring on the forums for many months for an Android client. Yeah. Oh, and also there are other people around the world that are obviously they're interested in not only interested in this, but actually other developers who are, are, are doing uh, similar projects. And so, you know, collaboration is always really beneficial for everybody. So if, if they want to contact you, they can go to bitcoinlabs.com, and that's going to give them all the uh, details of how to reach you and your GitHub accounts and email and also Twitter, right? At Bitcoin Labs. Okay, mm -hmm. perfect. So they yeah, can get a hold uh, of you. Right now, it redirects to the um, GitHub group, Bitcoin Labs. Oh, okay. Uh, it's just a, an informal group we made on GitHub. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, any, if anyone wants to join, by all okay. means, we'll add you. Cool. Um, yeah, it's just developers hacking on Bitcoin stuff. Yeah, perfect. Uh, perfect. So here in New York, we meet up uh, once a once a week. Mm -hmm. And um, this is yeah, so exciting. Right now, first the Android client, uh, mm -hmm. then later on we, we want to make a high-frequency trading exchange, uh, like a really high-speed um, matching engine for the bids and the asks uh, and all the wrappers around that. That would be an exchange uh, site, like like Mt. Gox uh, or yeah. Bitcoin Central? So we'll see the software behind it. Uh, so mm -hmm. anybody could just say, yes, I want to run a high-frequency trading mm -hmm. site. Uh, and install that package. Source. It'll be free uh, open source because everything you guys do is free open source, right? Yeah, absolutely. Very uh, non-restrictive license, right? Okay. Yeah, a permissive license. Permissive. Uh, MIT, Apache. Okay, cool. And then um, now, like... Would is there a benefit for many people to run a high high frequency trading site, or is it better if it's just one or two? Mm. <laughs> I mean, I guess we need to ask well, an economist. Be run, uh, but it's nice for people to be able to run. Mm -hmm. uh, it's nice for the code to be uh, up on GitHub so that mm -hmm. anybody can make it better or yeah. find security flaws uh, right. before what bad intentions do. Yeah. Um, yeah, we we're hacking mm -hmm. Bitcoin free software. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And if you want to, if you want to, uh, to to create a trading site in Uzbekistan and uh, you you know trade trade Bitcoin for the Uzbek Som, you can do that in your own currency, just to mm -hmm. proliferate the ease of translation from Bitcoin to whatever currency, right? Yeah, 
and just like the Bitcoin network is a decentralized distributed network, the, by having decent, like if you had just one exchange, you know, that, that's a weakness point. But if you have right. lots of people running exchanges, it gets alternative and it definitely feeds into that distributed power and strength. Right. And also just in case anything were to happen to that one, that would be a real weak link. Yeah. So uh, let's see. What else? Also, you guys have told me about another project. I don't know what you call it. We call it the uh, Warp Speed, Bitcoin Network Warp Speed Project, but I don't know what you guys call it. Tell us about that. You know what I'm talking about? All oh, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, within a month, there will probably be a high-quality uh, Bitcoin uh, peer-to-peer implementation. Uh, I started working on one a while back. Uh, then uh, somebody else, uh, Stefan, uh, uh-huh. was, did, did a lot more work, uh, uh-huh. and it's up um, – we should throw up a link to that. Um, Isn't the network already peer to peer? Yeah. W- sorry, what? The network's already peer to peer. So, what are you doing differently? Uh, re-implementing it in no, in JavaScript, uh, in with Node.js, uh, which has some technical advantages. Okay. Um, yeah, Stefan did most of the work uh, for what's up there now. Um, so the point of this is to optimize right. it and make it super fast. Right. So, so first, uh, make a Bitcoin, a general uh, Bitcoin node um, mm-hmm. that's easily uh, readable, understandable, uh, modifiable, um, and, and then experiment with ways to bring the speed up, um, like uh, propagating the in- inventory messages before you get the actual block. Um, yeah, just experimenting with things uh, to possibly make it faster, um, and then add preferred peers. Uh, so that uh, an organization, say Mt. Gox or a mining pool uh, or a Bitcoin foundation of some sort, uh, could set up um, servers on Amazon's uh, data centers uh, in the U.S. East, U.S. West, Europe, uh, Japan, uh, and have them all talk to each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and each of these nodes, since it's Node.js, it's massively scalable. Thousands of people can be connected to each of these. Um, and so... They as soon as as soon as somebody publishes a transaction, it'll hit one of these, uh, and then it will hit all of them, uh, and then it will hit everybody that's connected to them. Okay, uh, so within a couple hops, uh, you will have reached the entire Bitcoin network, um, mm-hmm. and the, these nodes can be doing extensive uh, monitoring of the network to okay. just so for the, see how fast they can propagate. For the non-technical or less technical people, isn't that what the network already does? Tell us what's the main difference between this and the way it works now. Uh, it's exactly the same. <laughs> it's just doing it faster and uh, having uh, some nodes, having a few nodes which can support a massive number of connections. Okay, so because of that, it's gonna it's gonna make it the transactions uh, get, sort of guarantee that they clear in more nodes much faster at like a lightning speed, which uh, adds to the security and the the safety and the speed of the clearing of the transactions. Is that right? Uh, yeah, right. The main okay. concern is double spending, mm-hmm. and if when you publish a transaction, it propagates the entire network within milliseconds as mm-hmm. opposed to seconds, mm-hmm. uh, then you, by which I mean a uh, point of sale machine at some pizza shop, mm-hmm. uh, can check the network say point zero point seven seconds later mm-hmm. uh, and see okay, seven hundred milliseconds out, there's still no double spend attempt, mm-hmm. so we're in the clear. Okay. As opposed to having to wait much longer. So um, this is actually this would benefit the entire Bitcoin network and every user in the world because it's all the same network, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, and, it's it's exactly the same network, uh, just trying to make it faster. Okay. So when you like, so right now when you send, I mean, let's say that that's impl- implemented, right? Then when you send a Bitcoin payment and it says, you know, it shows up unverified right away, and then. Uh, you get a verification, like one more verification every 10 minutes. You're still going to get one more verification every 10 minutes. It really won't change anything functionally f- from appearances, but it will just, uh, like behind the scenes, it'll m- uh, increase, I guess, the guarantee or the probability exponentially that there won't be any double spends. So in other words, it'll make it safer for the coffee shop to give you your cafe latte, even though it's unconfirmed. Is that right? Right. Okay. <laughs> yes. or, or it'll be cheaper for them to purchase insurance against there being a double spend. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Uh, insurance. That's a, <laughs> a whole other project. Insurance. Wow. Anyway. This is so amazing. So have you guys been um, – have you guys made a lot of progress today? Uh, we will by tonight. Okay. <laughs> All right. I wish we were there. Maybe we'll, we'll yeah. head out there. 
uh, you know, our... Uh, you guys are in, where, Brooklyn, or...? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, in Brooklyn. So our buddy Plato here, yeah. he's uh, he's going to be uh, heading out on the road. <laughs> he's yep. got to he's got to go to L.A. But uh, maybe we'll you know who knows maybe we'll make it over there to Brooklyn before you're done if you're if you're going to hack all night. But uh, well, thanks for joining us and thanks Thank for you. the update. Thanks. And we'll, you know, we'll definitely keep in touch. We're going to do this uh, this show weekly now, so um, we'll be we'll be uh, looking to you for uh, updates. And uh, really, really exciting. Thanks for all the the info. Thanks, and guys. The audience can find uh, and all developers and anybody interested can go to BitcoinLabs.com and and Bitcoin Labs on Twitter. So, uh, all right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks. Keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah. Hacking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, Bye. Wow. That is so amazing, right? Yeah, that's awesome. The ATM. Let me. Oh, let me show you the picture of the ATM that I had. Uh, this is. Cool. That, that is, is so, so cool, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and what they're working on is just amazing. I know. That they've gotten this, I mean, so fast. Android apps and, uh, well, three major things that they were talking about. Android apps, which is like just, that's just so, so fundamental. Because when everybody has a, a smartphone app, then bing, bing, I can send you 50 and you can send him 25 and so forth. We can just do it even in person or remotely. You can email me your Bitcoin address and I can literally go copy, paste, send right from the phone without any other without even using an online service having it right there in your wallet that's really slick and global absolutely global that's that's going to empower every human being yeah well, even if you're it doesn't matter like i said if you're in tanzania you know you could sure. literally use your you've got online banking in your hand it'll make your travels faster for it's, sure yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no delays and and then the uh, the hyperspeed project, I, I call it the warp speed, whatever. The, I don't know if they have a name for it, but what they're doing to um, turbocharge the entire Bitcoin network by making these super high speed nodes is so fascinating because, and it's just so beautiful because that's the, like the beauty of open source software developers like these guys. They're they're basically volunteers working for the benefit of all mankind, which is just It's all, true, phenomenal. and their efforts are going to strengthen the, strengthen the community a lot. Like, when that application yeah. comes out, I certainly would like to buy a few Bitcoins the day before because I mm-hmm. expect the price will go through the roof. Yeah, So absolutely. I recommend that uh, any of our listeners who would like to support these guys, send them a Bitcoin or two as tips because yeah. those, those help enormously, especially just to show your support. That's, that's, the, that's the key. It's not even the yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, you hear that, Andrew, Mark, uh, Gabriel, and uh, make sure that you put your Bitcoin address for tipping on your BitcoinLabs.com. <laughs> Check that out. But yeah, definitely send them a tip or two because these guys work so hard. Every single Saturday, they're there for hours and hours working together in this little cauldron of uh, developer geekdom. But it's what they're going to come out with, what they are coming out with, is going to absolutely change the world, just like Bitcoin itself sure. is going to. So you know th- this is just like exponentially leapfrogging everything, and then the the ATM is just the fun icing on the cake. The idea that we, that they'll actually he wants to take it to geek conventions, you know, initially sure, hack yeah. fests and stuff, where uh, they'll be able to demonstrate that you know, and you know what's going to happen. That, that's probably why they want to do that. Is they take it to these hacker conventions and they demonstrate this ATM that you just go up and scan an image and boom, money pops out, and the, the hackers are going to go, oh my god, that is so cool. Mm-hmm. They're all going to. De- you know, develop like amazing, even more interest in Bitcoin and developing for Bitcoin. So yeah, it's a, psh, exponential again. It's going to explode. Yeah. It's totally going to explode. That's great. So, so uh, we have a few minutes. Uh, you want to give us a little laundry list of some of your needs that you want to tell everyone that you need. <laughs> Put it out there. Uh, gas food. Sure. Gas. <laughs> yeah, you mentioned if gas food, lodging, basically. Right? Gas, food, and lodging are the three priorities. And <laughs> I can I can kind of scratch lodging off the list. I have a tent. I have a sleeping bag. Uh, mm-hmm. If anyone wants to sell me a pillow for bitcoins, I could I could probably take that because uh, <laughs> I, I managed to forget that. But <laughs> yeah, gas and food are the predominant predominant problems. So if you're anywhere in the bottom half of the U.S. and mm-hmm. you would like to help me out. 
uh, head to therealplato.com, pull up my map, drop a pin on the map, and uh, get in touch with me so I know how to get in touch with you. What about, um, like, I don't know if you can, can you safely carry, like, a gas tank, like a 25-gallon tank or something in the back? I don't know if that's safe. That would be giant. My, my, t- my car's gas tank is 14 gallons, which gives oh. me a range of somewhere between 250, 300 miles, which actually is, there's, I'm a little concerned because I don't have any gas stops, known gas stops, between Jersey and North Carolina. Mm. So if you are in the Washington, D.C. or the Virginia area, you could really help me out a lot. Oh, yeah, we've got, there's a Bitcoin meetup in D.C., so there are, there are several Bitcoin users in D.C. that, so when you watch this, make sure you go to therealplato.com and get a hold of him. He'll be online the whole time. And get a hold of him and let him know that you'll meet him at a gas station and sell him some gas mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, for bitcoins. I'll appreciate it. Where else do you have like weak links in your in your route there? Uh, yeah. Are there any other spots where? Yeah, pull it up. Let's let's look, let's let's take a look. So right now I got my car in New York City, and uh, this was actually the first time I've driven in New York City, and it was a little bit harrowing. So I'm <laughs> hoping it won't be quite as bad for the rest of the trip. <laughs> Uh, so we got Trenton, New Jersey, all the way down to uh, North Carolina down here. That's that's the f- that's gonna be the first tricky part. Mm-hmm. And these green pins are interesting things to see along the way. So uh, there's a, a George Washington Masonic Museum. Uh, the DEA Museum sounded kind of cool. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. Miles the Monster. This is some giant concrete sculpture at a racetrack. These are all free, I, I imagine, right? Maybe <laughs> some of them aren't going to be, but what so I'm gonna what I'm gonna end to up be doing, invited to some of these, right? I figure <laughs> I figure I'll I'll go to the uh, the proprietor and say, hey, I'd, I'd I'd like to check out this museum. I, I see you have a nominal uh, admission fee. Can I pay you in bitcoins? <laughs> and of course they'll ask more bitcoins, and I'll launch into my spiel and explain, hey, look, I'm I'm blogging about this. I can give you some publicity. Uh, all you got to do is let me in for some bitcoins. Yeah. <laughs> They'll say, uh, "What is that? The casino tokens? What are you yeah. talking about?" <laughs> so, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, to Harrisburg, Mississippi. That might be another rough stretch. Um, Harrisburg, Mississippi to Arkansas. Uh, basically, everything after Florida is looking a little bit uh, trickier right now. But uh, well, especially, what we'll is help that? you get the word out. Especially Tulsa to Denver. Now. Is that Tulsa to Denver? That looks like a really long stretch. Yeah, that's the entirety of Kansas, guys. The on of one Kansas. tank of gas. Not wow. sure. Not sure how well that's going to work. <laughs> but but this is all in the future. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I'll, it's, this will it's all be change a... after the show too. So yeah. <laughs> I certainly hope so. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. So we know that there are Bitcoiners in Kansas that are gonna they're gonna ring you up so they can uh, email you and tweet you and go to your website and find all that and uh, so, yeah. So you'll you'll be able to answer their tweets and their emails and all that stuff along the route and, oh, and make yeah. arrangements and let them know what's the time frame that they should expect you'll be passing through. Um, I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I, I I'm taking it one leg at a time. So last weekend, last Saturday, I I, I decided. I'll get to New York in one week. Mm-hmm. So I gave myself a week. It, it took exactly that. Now I'm here. I probably will uh, head south on Monday. Mm-hmm. And I well, I think I'd like to get to North or South Carolina by next weekend. Awesome. Maybe, maybe further if possible, but I... I'm going to start small, see see how it goes along the way. And you can always go to the map and we'll see where your car is. So we're, That's true. We can uh, have an idea. All right, okay. We're out of time, but it's been great. It's yes, been great. Thank so you for joining us, and I'm glad trip. you made a pit stop in New York City. I'm yes. glad I did, too. I, I and, greatly appreciate it. And we want updates, and we want to keep track of you. So. All right. Yeah, I'll awesome. certainly be in touch, and I'm really glad I could be on the very first yes, episode. I know, of so the exciting. Show. Yes, all right. Exciting. We'll see you all next week. See you. Bye bye. Right. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.